So, for this workshop, I will be talking about streams. Streams are a really nifty little interface that you can use in Node.js for shuffling data around, input and output. It's a similar idea as from Unix, how we've been piping commands to one another. Like you pipe, you take a grep and you pipe that through sed and then maybe you pipe that through wc. You can do the same kind of thing in Node. It's really fun. So I've written a lot about this kind of stuff in the past. I've got this GitHub repo called Stream Handbook that's a good read if you think this stuff is interesting. This is sort of a condensed version of what's in this document. There's also a Node school called Stream Adventure that I made a while ago. And that's a really fun, oh, I don't have it myself, but I guess I do. Cool. Well, if you zoom out a little bit. So this is also a really handy companion go through them one by one, and it gets kind of crazy at the end, so this one is super fun. If you can do the last one, you know almost all there is to know about streams. So. Okay, so where do streams come from? So streams, the idea of them, I think, at least in computing, has been around a very long time. This is a quote from 1964 by Doug McElroy, one of the, one of the people behind the Unix system at Bell Labs. I just love this quote. We should have some ways of connecting programs like a garden hose. Screw in another segment when it becomes necessary to manage data in another way. This is the way of I.O. also. So this is the idea from Unix that you have a command, it has a standard input and a standard output, and the input of, the input of one program, or the output of a program can be the input of another, and the output of that program can be the input of another and so on, so that you can, instead of building very large applications, you can build small applications that do a single thing very well, and they can focus. And you have this nice interface for gluing these abstractions together. So we can compose these streaming abstractions very very nicely if we, if we have an interface like this. And also importantly, uh, with streams, you can operate on data in little chunks. So You've maybe seen some ways of reading files where you, you read the whole file into memory and you have you have the entire file content in a, in a string or something. This is a really big problem if your data is gigabytes or even hundreds of megabytes. That can be a problem if you're running on a, on a cheap server that only has 256 megs of RAM, for instance. Um, so I've got some stuff in the stream handbook that can like it uses a module called JSON stream that can parse, because it only parses uh, JSON chunk by chunk, you can load really big JSON files. Like I have one, I found one uh, that the city of San Francisco made for all of the, the plots um, as GeoJSON. It was like a 200 megabyte file or something and you can just immediately start processing. Actually, it would crash node if you try to just uh, load it in memory because doesn't have enough memory. So, uh, here's an example from the workshop last week about Unix, where we had maybe like a file, Moby Dick, and we piped that to sed, and piped that to grep, piped that to like wc, and did a thing. Um, here's how the kind of idea looks in Node, uh, kind of leaving out some, some of these convenience functions, but we can do read in this case, which just does uh, fs.createReadStream. You can dot pipe instead of using a pipe character to another function that returns a stream. So here we can replace all of the, uh, the white space with new lines. We can pipe that to filter, which is like grep. And we can pipe that to uh, a line count function like wc-l, which you So I've got an example of that in. For uh, replace and filter and line count, are those built in? No, that's what I'm showing. Oh, okay. So I have a file whale.js here that I was just hacking on um, a moment ago. So here I've got read, which is just a little function that shells out to fs.createReadStream, which is built in in Node. I've also got replace. I'm using some modules that I'll, I'll explain later. Uh, combine stream, and I'm using split and through. And so this is internally kind of piping them together for me. And I've got a filter function that just uses the built-in um, built regular expression methods, and then finally line count, which 
uses some other modules to sort of glue things together, and basically for every line, it just increments the counter. And when the output finishes, it calls a callback. So we can build the same kind of abstraction that ha actually has very similar characteristics. Like if you if you use Unix streams, then Unix will do some buffering internally, and so you don't have to read everything into memory, and you start getting the results immediately instead of waiting for the, the entire file to load. You get the same properties with with uh, node streams. So. Um, yeah, so here's here's something really basic you can try right away. So uh, I can just make this example live. Maybe that will be a little bit more helpful. So if we have a file with some content, so I'll do echo uh, hello there on the ballroom to a file reads.txt. Um, now we can make uh, a JavaScript file, and we can do verfs equals requirefs. Now there's a built-in called create read stream, and we can give it our file name, .txt. Now, this is called a readable stream, and we can call .pipe on readable streams. So we need a destination now, now that we have the input. So one of the built-in destinations is process.standardout. This prints to the terminal. So once we've done that, we can run greets.txt, or sorry, greets.js, and we get the the message. So this is basically the cat command that we've just made, except it has a hard-coded argument. Um, right. But what if we want to transform the output? What if we want to make it uppercase or change a word to mean something else? So to do that, we can use uh, some modules. So here's our program before, basically. Uh, what's nice, though, is we can chain together whichever uh, additional pipe operations we need. We can take that garden hose and screw in another segment wherever we like. So let's do that. Uh, there's this really handy module called through2. It's named through2 for silly historical reasons, but it's just called through2. And if we screw that segment into our pipeline here, um, then we can perform this transformation. So we get the we get the data from our file, greets.txt. Then we can transform that data um, so we can convert it to uppercase and we can then take the transform data and write that to standard out. So here's the beginnings of a two upper function. So right now you get each chunk piece by piece and it's a buffer. Uh, so if you want to convert a buffer to a string, you do dot two string. Then strings have a method called two uppercase that's just a built in. Um, so the next thing you can do is do this dot push with a through string and push will put things on the output side of a stream. So there's input and there's output. So um, create read stream, when we call dot pipe on our uppercase or stream, is writing things to us on our input. And now when we call push, we're pushing them out to the output side. And uh, the other thing to remember is if you use through two, you get these three arguments, buffer, encoding, ignore that, doesn't matter. And next, so you have to call the next function. That's just like, I'm ready for the next piece. Um, otherwise, you would maybe be getting too many chunks, and maybe you can't handle so many chunks. Like, maybe you're doing some asynchronous operations or, or whatever. So uh, we can have a little program like this, which I think I have, and you should get an uppercase message. So we can modify our program to do the same thing. So greets.js. Now we require through to like that. And now we put in our segment, so through. Now we get like a, a right function, so like two upper, and then function to upper, buff, encoding next. And so we do this dot push uh, buff dot two string. So we have a string, and on strings you can do two uppercase, like that, and then make sure to call next. If we run our program, we should get an uppercase version of the text file. And we do. Great. So that's just a really simple example of how you can transform data using streams. Um, so we've already, I, I mentioned this, but programs have a standard in. This is like typing on the keyboard, or maybe it's the output of another program that's being fed into your program. So what's really great about streams is that we can just take our existing program where we have fs.createReadStream and we can swap out createReadStream for another kind of stream that's a readable stream. So standard in is another example of that. So we can just swap the 
this out in the program. So here I'll do that in our program. So if I take this fs out uh, and just do process.standard in, now if I run greets.js, I can type hello, beep, boop, and I get uppercase messages, which is great. Um, standard in. So through is not built into node core, but it's a very common abstraction. Uh, you can install it with npm just by doing npm install through too. And it's a little bit nicer. So I'll also show you the, how you can do this with node core because node core also has streams, but it's a little bit more awkward. So that's why, um, that's why I recommend you just use through too. So here's what it looks like using core streams. Um, the stream module in node is built in and it has this uppercase T transform, which is a constructor function. So you can instantiate a new transform stream like this, but then you have to define an underscore transform uh, function. And then you get a similar signature to through, where you get the buffer, the encoding, and an next function. This is built in Node? Yes, this is, this is built into Node. So you could do it this way, or you could do it the way that I showed with through. It's a little bit nicer with through. Um, but it works the same, which is important. Uh, so unless you really need to use inheritance and constructors, it's often much easier just to use a module. And there are lots of modules that are very that are very uh, focused that do one thing well, and I'll show you a few of them, but there are many more on NPM. This is the difference between Python and Node. In Node, uh, well, Python is about batteries included. Node is about not including so many batteries, but having a having the package eco ecosystem support all of the different kinds of use cases and trade-offs that people might have. So here's a little more in depth about how through works. So you get a write function and an end function. Both of these are optional. So in our example, we only had a write function. And that's that's a function that takes that uh, will get as arguments a buffer, an encoding, and a next callback. You can call this whatever you want. And then an, an end function um, that's, that fires when the input stream has, has finished. So this is like if you're on the command line and you hit the control V key and it sort of like stops processing. Like a, if I do wc-l and I type some text and I do control P, now the wc program prints one because it noticed that standard in ended. So this is a similar, this is carried over into streams and node. Um, and then I, I showed this before, you can do, if you're inside of the callback, so here in our callback, we did this thing, this.push. This refers to, this is the literal this, which I will refer to now as context to make it easier to talk about. The context is set up for us by the through module. Mm -hmm. And so the context, the context has some methods uh, like push, uh, write, and and these are, this would be the same as if I had saved, saved the result of through to a variable. So if I had done that, and I had done tr.push. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of just a shorthand, so you don't have to name as many things in your program. But that only works inside of the callback. Okay. Um, and then if you want the stream to end, you do this.push of null, which is called a, sometimes called a sentinel value, and that just ends the stream. So if you don't give, both, I mentioned that both of those arguments are optional. If you don't define them, they have this definition. So you get a buffer encoding next, and then it just pushes it to the output. So this is, this is sort of like a, it's called a pass-through stream. It's like whatever gets written on the input side gets passed directly through to the output. And it's sometimes kind of handy just to define a through just as an input stream because uh, there are a lot of a lot of interfaces where they expect a stream and you can just make one and then write to it yourself. And you can produce output without very much code just by doing a through without any arguments. Um, so let's get into some modules now. So we've seen through. There's another one called concat stream that's, that's really handy. Uh, through, with the through module, we could both read and write to it, so we could call dot pipe on it, and we could pipe to our stream, so it was both readable and writable, uh, which I'll get
get into a little more in a bit, but for now, concat stream is an example of a purely writable stream. So you can only pipe to concat stream. It's kind of like the terminator on, it'd be sort of like, to extend the garden hose analogy, it's sort of like a sprinkler or something. You can't really plug anything after the sprinkler. It just goes everywhere. Um, so you can npm install concat stream, then require the module, and now you pipe something like standard in into concat stream, and concat stream will buffer everything up uh, into this argument body, which is like a buffer probably. Uh, so if, if we want to count, if we want to count all of the bytes that we've been written, we could like console.log body length, for example. It's kind of a bad idea because we can compute the length inline, which will save us a lot of memory. So we could this program will not scale very well up to gigabyte files. If you don't have that problem, it, it works fine. Um, yes, so why aren't I sure you can catch stream? So, Sorry, so why does it scale very well? Because concat stream buffers everything into memory. So uh, one of the big benefits of using streams is that it only operates in little chunks. So you don't need to, you only need to keep those individual chunks in memory. You don't need to keep the whole file memory. But if you do use concat stream, then you just have to keep in mind that those chunks are being uh, buffered into memory. It's one big chunk. Yep, so if you don't have very much memory, or you have a very large input file, then uh, you'll maybe want to, if you can, figure out a way to write it uh, in line. Like, for, actually, that's a great, I will use this example to explain how you do that. So, why don't I write up this example? Uh, so you require concat stream, and we can take like standard in, pipe that to concat stream, and we get our callback. So console.log body .link. right? So this is what was shown on the slides. And if I run it, eight characters, cool. So it's like the wc dash c command. Um, but actually, it would be better uh, if we didn't have to buffer the entire contents of memory just to keep around a single integer, which is the number of bytes. So really, for this particular program, it would make more sense to use uh, through stream and just keep track of the number of bytes. So through takes uh, two arguments, like the write function and the end function. So if we have a write function and an end function, uh, we can just keep a counter around to count the number of bytes. Zero. Start at zero, and every time the right function fires, we just increment the count like that. Go to the next one. So this program would use much less memory on a very large input file, but it works the same. Cool. Yep. Great. Any questions? Shout them out. Okay. So we've seen a few types of streams already. We've seen readable streams uh, like process.standard in. So you can do process.standard in.pipe, but you can't pipe something into standard in um, because, like, where would it go? It's just it's feeding you information. It's like it's like you can't pipe something to a keyboard, but you can pipe the data from a keyboard to somewhere. So that's a readable stream. There's also a writable stream like concat stream or process.standard out or process.standard error. These are things that you can write to, but you can't can't take their data and put it somewhere else because they're sort of like a sink. It's like a, a code code graveyard or data graveyard where you just can only put stuff in and you shouldn't take stuff out because you'll get zombies. Um, so there are two other kinds of streams. Uh, yeah, Christian. So, yeah, the question is, what is what's in a stream, right? It, so streams operate on chunks. Um, it depends on what the source of data is, because some sources of data will give you uh, just kind of arbitrary chunks, like directly from the operating system. Like with Node Core, uh, you'll mostly get chunks like that. You really can't predict how the operating system is going to split up memory. So like fs.createReadStream will just give you random chunks. Some modules will give you chunks of a particular size. 
or chunks that are like uh, split by lines, for example. So you, you can use some modules, and I'll show one of these modules called Split that can handle like, what the size of a chunk is. But for the most part, you shouldn't expect that an arbitrary stream is going to give you any meaningful chunking. It's usually not single characters, though. It's, it's usually, but it could be. It's usually not. <laughs> yes? This is a related question. Uh, what you get from a stream is a buffer. Is that right? In the, in the right callback, yeah. Okay. And so what, what is, what's buffer relationship to right. like a, a chunk? Right. So buffer is a special thing that's available in Node. And it's like a string, but for binary data. So if you try to have like Unicode data in here, for example, well, I can't type that because I have a set of Xcode but if I could. Um, so buffers are basically just arrays of bytes. So values from 0 to 255 inclusive, um, one after the other. So this maps pretty well to uh, main memory. And it's a lot nicer to, if you're getting things from the operating system, all of that stuff is with uh, probably like character arrays, like pointers to memory and stuff. So that's kind of like what you're getting. In JavaScript, if you have a string, it's a, it's a Unicode string. And Unicode is a little bit tricky because some of the characters actually have multiple bytes. So buffers just only deal in bytes. And you can convert a buffer to a string if you have one. So this is how you make a buffer from a string. And then you can convert that buffer back to a string by doing two strings. Then you get a string. Yep, question. Yep. Yes, yeah, so we can do that. Yeah, in this case, they will be line buffered because uh, it's we're on an active TTY, which does the line buffering, but that's just sort of an implementation detail. So there we go. Mm -hmm. This buffer actually has the contents uh, ABC. This, these are in hex in the representation. So 61 in hex is lowercase a, and 67 in hex is lowercase g. And then OA is a new line character. So, and then if we type some more text, we'll get a, another line because this happens to be line buffered. But, yep. Okay. So some other stream types. Uh, all of the times that we've been using the through module, the through two module, uh, through two gives us a transform stream. So a transform stream is both readable and writable, but the, the data that you write to a transform stream kind of, uh, so the data that you write drives the data that you get out of it. So the input is a driver of the output. So like the sed commands, right? On, like if I do sed uh, replace e's with o's globally, and now I type beef, and I get boof. Um, and if I type something else, um, dog, I get dogo. So the input here is sort of driving the output. It's not. It, do, it doesn't necessarily have to be one to one. You could have something like WC that uh, sort of buffers multiple lines, and that's also a transform stream basically. But uh, it's distinct from another kind of stream that's both readable and writable called the duplex stream. And a duplex stream uh, sort of has decoupled read reads and writes. So an example of a dupl duplex stream would be like a network socket, or which is sort of like a telephone. You can talk to someone, and what you say doesn't necessarily influence what they're going to say, but it might. Um, and they can talk and listen whenever they want, and you can talk and listen whenever you want. There's sort of like two parties in a conversation, which is different from a transform stream where you're doing it transformation of some kind. Okay, so how these sorts of different kinds of streams map the code is if you see the name, like the kind of stream, like a readable stream, dot pipe into A, then this is a readable stream. If you have, like, uh, if you're piping into a stream, that's a writable stream. If you're, if you have a source of data, you pipe it to another kind of stream, and then you pipe it somewhere else, the thing in the middle is a transform stream. Uh, but
but notice that the input is not the same as the output. But with duplex streams, you see this other pattern, which looks completely crazy, but it, it's totally fine. You actually take the input stream, you pipe it to the duplex stream, and you pipe that out to the same stream that you're piping in. This doesn't necessarily have to be true, but it's very common uh, with duplex streams, because these are these both have decoupled reads and writes. So uh, I should mention too that when you call dot pipe, it returns uh, it returns its arguments. So that's how these, this chaining is implemented. So if I do a dot pipe duplex, that expression will return duplex. So that then this this would be like doing um, uh, a dot pipe duplex semicolon duplex dot pipe a. So, a little more on duplex streams. So, if you ever see that pattern that I just showed, a dot pipe b dot pipe a, you have a duplex stream, almost guaranteed. Um, and it's like a telephone conversation. So, so we've seen pipe. Readable streams can do pipe. Uh, readable streams include transform streams and duplex streams because you can read from those. But there's also uh, writable methods. So this includes writable, transform, and duplex streams, and these are dot write and dot end. So you can write a buffer, and that that is like typing echo and piping it to a command. You're like pushing data at it, and then end closes the stream, like doing control B on the command line. And if you want to be a little more terse, you can actually give a buff to end or a string, and it will write that, and then it will end it immediately. So that's the same as doing both. So uh, I've got one here in a little bit with network sockets, but if you do like net.createServer or net.connect, that is a duplex stream. Um, so I can pop into an example right now, or we can, let's see. Yeah, actually, I'll do that right now. So I put this a little early. So if you have a server, right, this is also true of HTTP servers. Uh, well, actually, HTTP servers decouple it. but. Um, so if you do net.create server in node, it takes a callback, that stream is a duplex stream inside of the callback in the argument. And so if we listen on a port, um, then we can take the stream and pipe it somewhere else. Like if we want to pipe it just to standard out, and then we can also write a message. Now, if I run this server, and I connect with Netcat to localhost 5000, I see the message OK. If I pipe a message to that process, I see the message over there. So you can both, they're both readable and writable, but not in the same way that transform streams are. Um, and if we wanted to, to uh, make a proxy, for example, so what if we want everything incoming on port 5000 to go to port 5001? And everything on that service that runs on port 5001, we also want to send back to, to the other one. So what we can do is uh, make a connection with net.connect to like port 5001. Now we can do stream.pipesock.pipestream, and that will be a proxy. So if I run that program and I open up Netcat on, so I'll listen with Netcat on port 5001. <coughs> now our node server runs on port 5000. Now if I connect to port 5000, I get on port 5001 the message. And if I write back from the server on 5001, I see from our proxy server that it relayed the message. So. That's an example of a duplex stream. A little bit advanced. If you get this, then you get everything there is to know pretty much about streams, nearly, except for the user line modules. So um, there are a lot of these core abstractions in Node use strings because Node is all about asynchronous I.O. Um, you could do all of this with callbacks, but that would get really nested and ugly very quickly. So Node provides this uh, interface as a way to like 
shuffle data around, basically, which is mostly the kinds of things that you're, you're doing if you're building a web server and maybe it has WebSocket connections and maybe it needs to speak TCP to some other services or HTTP. These, these are all represented as streams in Node. So for HTTP servers, there's the request object that's a readable stream and then the response object is a writable stream. Uh, the net socket that I just showed is a duplex stream. Standard in, standard out. These are all streams. So this is a program. This is a, an echo program. So if you run this program, then, whoa, crap. I think I killed my slides. Let me zoom ahead. Okay, so if we run this program, well, I'll just type it. Standard out that pipe. Standard in dot pipe, standard out. Now everything I type, program will respond back with whatever I kept. Cool. So uh, that's just some of the core stuff. Another core thing that's very useful if you want to make web servers is an HTTP server. So you may have seen this before. <coughs> it's kind of the hello world. Uh, you create an HTTP server and you give it a callback. This is like the request handler. And you get a request object and a response object. Request is a readable stream, so you can pipe from it. And response is a writable stream, so you can pipe to it. So, for example, we could have an HTTP server where we pipe the request to standard out, just to show what it is, and we maybe just print a message and make that listen on a port. So I can do that. So we require the HTTP module, and now we make a server with HTTP.create server. And that takes a function that gets two parameters, uh, request and response, and then listen on a port, like 6005. Now, request is a readable stream, so we can put that somewhere. And res is writable stream, so we can write to it, we can take another stream, pipe it to, so uh, maybe to combine things a little bit, we could have a file, so if I make a file, uh, response.txt with the text cool beans in it. And now I go back to my, my server. We could do fs.create read stream response.txt pipe that into the response object because it's a writable stream. Now when someone connects, we'll send all of the data that they sent us. Maybe it's a post message, for example. And we'll put it to standard out. And then we will take our canned response in response.txt and write that to the response. Um, so if I run this program, there's p.js. Now in, let's see, we can use curl to send a message. Actually, I'll background that. So if we use curl x6005, or sorry, we'll send a post with uh, some data, beep equals boop to localhost 6005. And uh, because our server is in the background, uh, it printed this message. And then um, the response we got back is also, unfortunately, in the same terminal. If I do this from two separate terminals, it will, it'll be a little more clear. So here, I'll run that program again. OK, that's a little bit better. So our server printed what data that it got, which was the string beep boop. We could send it some other data if we like. Uh, XYZ 555. There we go. Uh, it just prints that to standard out. And we get back the message cool beans, which is from that file. Uh, if we want to save that text that we're getting as input, instead of printing it to standard out, what we could do is we could pipe it to a response stream. So there's another method that's similar to create read stream called create write stream. So we could, this will uh, open up a file handle, and everything we write to that file handle will be written to disk. So now if I run this program, node http.js, and uh, run a curl command, so now in our response.txt file, we'll get the message that, um, oh, hang on, that's the wrong file, request.txt. Then we get the message that the server, that we sent the server. Cool. Um, so that's pretty fundamental. 
fundamental node abstraction. It's used all over the place. Uh, if you're not using it directly, then you're using it implicitly. Um, it's just under the under the hood. So net, I already talked about. Um, another kind of stream that's often really handy is called an object stream. So streams have this property called back pressure, and back pressure is basically if you don't call next, then the data uh, doesn't keep coming. So the underlying file um, file system knows to not send more data if it's not needed. This is also really handy if you want to compose a program that maybe like parses JSON from input, but you don't want it to go too fast. Uh, so you can use streams for that kind of thing. But normally streams are only used for buffers and strings, like raw data. But there's this thing called object mode, and with through, you do through.obj. Now you can write objects to your streams. So here I'm just writing an object with like n5, n10. These are just ordinary objects. And you can call n. And what this will do is it will uh, push to the output a string in this case. And once you have a s strings or buffers, you can pipe that to standard out. So what this program will do is it will just uh, print, um, it takes these numbers as input, row.n, so like, and it multiplies by 5,000 and converts it to a string as a new line. So this will do, see I have this program right here, so this is obj.js, if I run it, we get 5,000, 10,000, 3,000. Simple, simple transformation. And we could put as many intermediate steps as we like. So if you want to take one object representation, convert it to another object representation, you could do that with through dot obj. Um, there's a way to do this with core streams. You pass in object mode true to the constructor as well. Uh, okay, now crazy territory, uh, crazy modules. So there's a lot of modules on NPM that do all kinds of wacky things with streams. Uh, one really useful one that's kind of a mind warp is called duplexer2. So you can use duplexer2 to take a writable stream and a readable stream and make a duplex stream out of it. Because a duplex stream is basically a decoupled readable writable interface. So you can use duplexer2 to do something like take standard out, which is a writable stream, we can write to it, and standard in, which is a readable stream, we can read from it. And now we have a single stream. When we write to it, it goes to standard out. When we read from it, this input comes from standard in. And we can pipe it somewhere else like standard error. So duplexer2 is really handy. Uh, if, you need, if you need a duplex stream to fit in a particular interface, you can use this module to do it. Um, some of the more challenging later stuff in the stream adventure tutorial uh, uses duplexer. And then, if you want to get even crazier, so maybe I'll, I'll show an example of uh, du using duplexer. So you require duplexer. Duplexer2 is the name on NPM. And so the simple case is just to like combine two streams. This is sometimes useful if you need to um, if you need to expose an interface. Like for example, if uh, there's a module called split that buffers everything by lines. So buff buffers might be at any size, but you might want to put them uh, so that they're line by line. I think actually the next example covers this, but I'll dive into it now. So we can use split, and uh, maybe we can export a function, export an interface. So module.exports equals function. And now we'll return duplexer of a split instance and some output. So we can make an output stream. Like we could make a new readable stream, or we could use through for that. Um, so if I just make an empty through, that's a pass through stream. So now I can like set timeout and wait two seconds, and then output that end cool beans. So we're not actually doing anything with the input though. So it'd be kind of nice to uh, pipe the input somewhere, like to our output. Um, so this will write everything to the input, but after two seconds, it will close our stream with the message cool beans. And maybe we'll put new lines around that. Okay. So this would be something that you can import. So we can load it, import it, and now we can write a message to it. And we can pipe the output somewhere. Oops. Uh, 
Is it? Thank you. Good. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Whoops. Oh no, I forgot to install that ahead of time. I'm very unprepared. Well, anyway, the so Seduplexer 2 works. Uh, you just have to play with it. I think that's most informative. So, there's another module called Split. Split is really handy if you want new lines. So, uh, I can just take some you can require the split function, and now we can uh, like type standard in to our split function, and then we can pipe that to our through uh, through function just to uh, inspect what chunks we're getting. That's a simple thing we can do. So if we do that and do next, so if I do this and I give it some uh, input, so give it ABC, new line, DEF, new line, GHI. Um, if I don't use split, what I'll get is that, oh, hang on. I don't know how that works. Right. There we go. Oh, I see. I forget to pipe. So I get one buffer with everything, even though that buffer has multiple new lines in it. So there's a new line, OA, there's a new line, there's a new line. With split, you get separate buffers, which is oftentimes much handier to deal with. So you can just get them piece by piece. Um, there's another crazy thing called Stream Combiner, or Stream Combiner 2. It's like Duplexer, but you can have as many streams as you want. So here's a, a little bit of an example that uses stream combiner, which sort of pipes pipes everything together and creates a stream that you can both read and write to. So um, I won't go into this too much, but we we start with the split function, and every item in that split function gets passed into this double function that just duplicates everything twice that was written, and then we just can count the number of lines, or sorry, the length of each line. So the length of each line should be double what we expect. So that should be, uh, starts as three, so it should be six in the output. That's uh, six, so it should be 12. So we should get six, 12, and then uh, four, which we do, yay. Um, so you can use stream combiner to do that kind of fancy stuff. You don't usually need this too often, but it's really handy if you need to put something in front of split. So if you just need the input to be line buffered, you can just throw a little combine and then split in there and then just keep on with your the rest of your transforms. Um, so any questions? Yeah, Scott. Okay. Split and combine. Yeah. One basic real world example. A real world example. You know what I mean. Yeah, so uh, the whale function the whale code we had earlier mm -hmm. is using so you know these would like replace right. the filter functions? Right. So what I'm doing here is to make those, I'm actually returning combine, and I'm using two arguments. The first one is split, mm -hmm. and then the next one is just a transform right. stream. Okay. So that just takes split, and it pipes that output, which is line buffered, into the next function, and it returns, sort of returns a whole pipeline. So the input of that, the combine output, is um, a stream that you can put wherever you need. Good for like wrapping functions with additional transforms. Yep. Could you do another example of like a duplex stream? I'm having a hard time knowing when I would use that or why. Um, sure. So, <laughs> right. So I could have written that whale example uh, with duplex streams too. It just would have been a little bit. So, uh, stream combiner is actually built out of duplexer streams. So, if I duplexer required duplexer. So now instead of combine here, I could have done, um, so this would be the outer stream. So none of this matters, we're rewriting it. So I can take a duplexer stream of, of uh, so we have our splitter. It splits things on lines. We can take duplexer. That's the input side of our duplexer, and then the output side is our, our stream.
stream that we had from before. So we save that to a variable, and uh, we return this whole thing. So we just return that. Um, but what we need to do then is uh, pipe our splitter into our transform function. So com stream combiner just does that, and you can put as many transformations as you like. Yep. So we pipe the split into true, but then why do we need to return something? Uh, so replace returns a transform stream. So if we just return tr, uh -huh. uh, this, so if we return tr, and don't do that, don't do duplexer, the input of tr will be directly from the interface, right? It's just we're returning that stream directly. We can't do anything before that happens, though. So this, like, bypasses our split that we want to be put in there. So if we want our split to happen before our transform, you have to use a module like duplexer to sort of stick it in there in advance. Yes. Then yep. Why wouldn't you put your split inside the through transformation? Uh, because you can't. There's like maybe not a place to put it. it. You can, but it would be really messy. Um, you would basically have to implement duplexer inside of this function to do that. The, the reason is that split is a, trans is a transform, and our through transform is also another transform. If you want to compose those and return the whole stream, if you want to like package those up into a single stream, then uh, you could write it yourself, but it's just messy, and this module does it for you. Okay. Yep. Could you, like, if I'm like a word or like a line, could you say I'm line A and just sort of walk through where it goes? Okay. Function replace. Okay. So we get input as arbitrary chunks from mobydex.txt. So these chunks could be like, you know, four kilobytes. You could have a lot of new lines, you could have no new lines at all. So um, this data gets fed into our replace function first, and we have some arguments. So the first thing that we want to do is to split those chunks on new lines and buffer so that uh, if, if we have a new line and then some text, but the last character is in a new line, then we should save that character for the next chunk that arrives so we can split everything cleanly into, into new line chunks. So once we've done that, um, our, our transformation sort of expects that we'll get lines as our input. So these lines come in one by one, and then we can perform our, our, our pattern replacement on those. So, but that split needs to happen before. So what we could do is we could pipe it into split up here, but then um, if you want to make this a module that people can just use, then you don't want to have to tell them, oh, by the way, you have to put split before you can do my module. It would be nicer if your module could just do that for itself. So a line comes in, um, it goes, the lines come in one by one to split. Um, we pipe the lines into our transform, and then what we want to do is have the input to replace come in, come into split, right? So the chunks are coming in into split, and they're leaving out through the output side of our transformation. So that packages it up. Okay. This is very hard. Just so you know, this is like, but you should, it's worthwhile as well. Any more questions? Yeah. Yes, they're already on the workshops repo. Um, and there's also the stream handbook that covers this stuff in more detail, especially you can read up on like duplex. Well, I guess you can. I haven't that part. But there's more about duplex. are used for files, for like HTTP requests, for networking stuff. Uh, but any kind of any kind of place where you've got a large chunk of data that's sequential, uh, streams 
are really useful for that. Aren't it like audio and video feed? Yeah. Sensor data, those are also can be useful. Yeah. Anything that's like data over time is a great fit for a stream. Cool. And it's like one of the best things you can do about Node. Do with Node is you can just pipe things together, set everything up, and then just let it go. And it'll put stuff where it needs to go. Yep. different kinds of problem. Like if you want if you want to listen for a kind of event that happens, you can use event emitters. But if you have if you just have a function and it's just only ever gonna gonna produce one result, then maybe a callback would be good for that. Um, there yeah, there are different places where you would use different abstractions. It's also about what kinds of primitives you have at your disposal if you use modules from core and user land. So, okay, so would it make sense? Okay, that's gonna be my next, my new thing for this week. <coughs> would it make sense to take, say, four sound files, like just, you know, a sine wave or whatever, four sound files or four images, and send that Yeah, that kind of sounds, so the problem is like you have four sound files and you need to send them somewhere else and unpack them. So sure. there's a module for that that uses streams called muxdmux. <coughs> uh, there's another one called multiplex. Okay. These are for uh, exactly what you described, I think. Taking many streams and sort of cramming them into a single transport and then unpacking them on the other side. Right. And there's some examples of that in the stream handbook. Oh, there was. I saw something. Yeah, yeah I thought, that, well, there's some examples somewhere, I'm sure. Okay. So the homework, if you want to do it, would be to install Stream Adventure and start playing around with streams. <laughs>